Let's take a look at solving this differential equation and incorporating the initial condition into the integral. So we have to begin with something somewhat familiar, hopefully, that y of b, for example, minus y of a, that's just the change in the value of y, is equal to the definite integral, for example, say from a to b of whatever y prime is, like this, you see? Say this way. Okay, so that's the change in the value of y. As x goes from a to b, y goes from y of a to y of b. That represents the change. You can also do this as follows. You can say the same thing with y of t minus y of 0 in this case. The only difference is you see, instead of having specific definite limits of integration, you just replace b with t. That's all. And on the right side, what you have is something similar. Let's see. You would have here the definite integral. So from the lower value, say, of 0 to the upper value of t. And now we have 2t plus 1. We introduce a dummy variable. So, for example, 2s plus 1 ds. Why do we do this? It's not strictly necessary. You could just as well have uh, 2t plus 1. But then the issue is, for example, the variable in the integrand and then the variable in the differential, it's the same as the variable in the upper limit of integration. Some people have found that to be confusing. So we just kind of switch this to s this way. See? And what this says is kind of something very similar to what you see with this integral up here. So now we can say y of t. We don't know what that is. And then here after that, you say y of 0 is equal to 2. So you would say minus 2. And then you can actually do the anti-differentiation. So the antiderivative of 2s plus 1 would be s squared plus s. And then you have the limit of t and 0 on the bottom, see? And then you go through that. So y of t minus 2 is equal to. Plug in the t as the upper limit. So that's the key step. Like if you had not s here, but t, it would look like this. You see, it would be t squared plus t. And then the upper limit of integration would also be t. So we kind of switch it to s for that reason, not to get confused. So this s, remember, is called a dummy variable. So you plug it in, and I have t squared plus t, and then minus 0 squared plus 0. Okay, continue. So y of t minus 2 is equal to t squared plus t. And now you have a negative 2 on the left side. So just move it over. So you're going to have y of t is equal to t squared plus t plus 2. And there's our function. You don't have to find, for example, there's no c. So notice, right? No c is present here. It's already incorporated. Let's take a look at a graph. Might be somewhat interesting or helpful. So look at this function. Okay, so graph t squared plus t plus 2. And it looks as shown here. If you look at this graph very carefully, look at the point 0, 2. That point is already present. Right here, it's incorporated, isn't it? Because this is, what is that? t equals 0, and then y equals 2. So it comes up to here, 0, comma 2 in that position. And it's built in. You have the function. And that's how you can incorporate initial conditions into integrals directly. I'll see you in another video. Like if it's been helpful.